Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militiaman and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey everybody, uh, Militiaman and Crew here tonight. It's Tuesday. Um, aside from the SVB news, um, hey, we've got some Dinara news for you. Uh, sadly, a lot of people out there are probably... Uh, you know, focused in on some critical stuff these days. Um, that's that's not why I'm here, but uh, I feel for everybody. And uh, I think that there's probably a lot more going on than, than meets the eye. But in the meantime, hey, uh, last night, Mark Z had me on uh, a show to give a, a quick up, update on where I'm at and what I do and what I, what I think of where, we're, where we are today. And uh, it was really nice to be there because uh, he's very supportive. Um, we, and we all should do that in, in this um, realm that we are in. Um, one of the things, too, was really nice to, to uh, meet Andy Sheckman, uh, Miles from Franklin. It was nice to talk to him. Uh, it was a uh, first-time meeting, but um, interestingly enough, um, our paths have crossed in, indirectly in, in the past. Um, many people that I've read uh, over the years, he mentioned uh, uh, Jim Wiley, uh, Peter Schiff, um, and others, you know, those those folks, they've been around a long time. They're very, very bright people, um, and they should be listened to. Um, so take in the good, you know, and we'll go from there. Um, hey, just recently, uh, you know, we talked about, well, it was yesterday. Um, just as a, as a recap on that show, we talked about like Al Sudani was going to go to the Kurdistan region. And we also talked about the dollarization and we also talked about things like um, Al Sistani, uh, the uh, Ayatollah, um, Grand Ayatollah, uh, talking to the citizens about currency. And so some of those things really are still in play again. Um, they've reiterated uh, more things. Al Sistani has, um, his group has published more, another paper on um, specifically about the, the okay for the citizens to be able to use. Uh, and sell currency, the dinar, uh, the euro, all those different things. Um, it was fascinating to, to see that uh, he uh, left out this last time. Well, maybe it wasn't just him. It could have been his media office, but they left out the, the one paragraph that was about um, the difference between the Kuwaiti dinar and the Iraqi dinar. So we can leave that alone. But um, last night um, with with Mark, we had some comments that about there was some contractors out there. Um, they do they do do contracts overseas and and in Iraq, and some of those things that they do um, may be relevant to what we are looking for. And so we talked about those things. So if you have a, have an opportunity to go and listen to that, it might be fun for you. Um, actually, so uh, Sistani today um, and or yesterday um, and maybe even tomorrow was in. Is or was and still is in the Kurdistan region, um, and, and they're talking about um, the developments of the oil and gas law, and um, specifics to the budget and to what they're going to do in the future. Um, it looks like that the Kurdistan regional government uh, is showing cooperation to resolve certain problems. Um, some of those problems have been in in progress, obviously, if you guys know, for a very, very long per period of time. But this new government with al Sudani, it's only been in in, uh, in power or uh, in charge for about four months. And their focus is, um, they think that they've come very, um, very far um, to important um, events. They're implementing their parts of the political agreement between the two sides. And so if they can do that, it's going to help the citizens, and it's going to be a, it should be a good thing. Um, something t you know to the effect of the Halabja province and its people. Obviously, there was some significant impact that happened you know in time past that they're trying to fix and trying to help out. And um, I, again, it's trying to be um, a maybe a. Um, a collective to get everybody on the same page, whether it's in certain provinces or all provinces, is to get everybody to uh, be Iraq, not just the Kurdistan and Baghdad and Erbil. It's about all of Iraq. And that's, I think that's a, that's a very positive situation. Um, they're basically s suggesting that uh, th they're not gonna spare um, any effort or any step to have fairness between everybody. So again, that's, a, that's a really a big thing. 
Um, it, the federal government um, has fulfilled its obligations towards victims, so maybe this budget has some allocations for that, um, and we will not spare any effort to stop. Um, the national uh, the national file in and of itself just basically is going to state that the economic opportunities for everybody um, is is for the Kurdistan region and for Baghdad, and they're they're working on that. Um, as we all know, that regarding Article One Hundred and Forty of the Constitution, um, that part of the political agreement and the allocations from the budget um, are for a central committee, and it sounds like they specifically have um, monies for that, and there and that concern is uh, taken care of because they've openly stated they've got that done. So let's see how that goes. Um, I don't know. It looks to me like the the, impl the implementation of financial allocations for all of those things um, to get this thing started is is a very positive sign. Uh, today, for instance, the uh, Al Sudani's advisor is saying that the draft budget approval for the coming years remains indica indicative and subject to amendment. Well, they're talking about the 2023 budget, and that. Um, Budget goes back to the financial management law, uh, uh, law number six of 2019, um, and st they're still saying it's in force. So the annual budget, going to keep moving forward. It's okay. The financial plan um, and all and containing all the estimates and for the coming years, I, I believe it's for the next three years, is is solid, and even the citizens are approving of it and they like it. And that's, that's really kind of a big thing because when they put these budget or this particular budget out that long, what they are saying is that they have amendments for it and they can adjust it when they need to. For instance, if oil rises, um, significant revenues, streams come in, differentials happen, they can make adjustments during this uh, three-year process. And that's basically setting the stage to give comfort, I think, for the private sector. And with that being said, um, that's their whole focus. This whole budget for 2023, 2024, 2025 is all about going to a private sector. So the stability and security that they're going to get for the investors and for the public is going to be pretty big because that just goes to show that they're committed. In the past, they only did them for a year. And so at this stage with them being open and being able to be adjusted and amended based off of oil pricing, uh, natural gas pricing, uh, taxes and tariffs, the revenues if applicable, or even an adjustment in their exchange rate, they can do all that. I mean, their exchange rate, for instance, if they can do all that with all these things, they can, they can manage it electronically. That's why these platforms, the ISCADA, the Buna platform we've talked about, um, the, the ISO 2022, all those things are in place for a reason. They didn't just push these guys over the edge to get them off the dollar for no reason. They did it for a reason. They did it for them to get onto the dinar. We talked about that. I think we talked about the, the, dollar, um, the dollarization of the country. Everybody's got to go to... Um, to to the to the dinar in in country they need to go to the dinar they're not going to be using the dollar so they're they're actually physically getting them prepared to to do that and then when, when we see all these electronic systems coming in um, today the uh, the central bank governor the, he appointed a new deputy um, and his name looks like is uh, Fasal Wassam Al Hans. Uh, as a deputy governor, the guy's his um, experience goes back decades. He was a director general of the Trade Bank of Iraq. Um, it was a state-owned facility that internet that did international transactions and provide provided fan uh, you know financing for that too. So um, he's he's basically been tapped for a deputy governorship. And um, his past two also, we haven't heard anything much about it lately, but it is the chairman of the Iraqi Securities Commission. And he was the regulator body responsible for overseeing the Iraqi Stock Exchange. So those types of things, as you can see at this stage of the game, um, are important. And they're going to um, uh, 
see that this progress is coming coming to a head. Um, as far as the, uh, the de-dollarization is concerned, I think that when they mean that, what they're saying is that they're not going to allow the, the dollar to be traded um, within the local currencies. So the point of sale systems, the electronic systems, everything's going to be cleared in dinar in the future. Uh, today, I had some data that's out about the central bank has come out with uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11 different components about how, how they're going to treat that. Um, they're, they're, they're monitoring how it's done and how it's worked electronically. So why do I tie that together? Because if they, if they tell you that it's going to be a 1320, but yet they tell you in the budget, they can change the value or they can change um, the uh, budget to reflect uh, fluctuations in oil pricing. Um, they can also fluctuate the currency prices um, with an exchange rate differential. They can do all that. And that's what this three-year budget really been, has been done. Um, or what it should do, as, as far as I can tell. So as we, as we move forward with the, the uh, de-dollarization, as I call it, but they call it dollarization. But the, 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 the great thing about it is, is that they're getting the public off the dinar electronically. And interestingly enough, the CBI is, is, is focusing in on less cash. And so and they even mentioned uh, to, to a degree that this isn't just a function of Iraq, it's globally. So as we started out this process is about the uh, um, SVB bank uh, had some issues. And so um, there's gonna be some potential blowbacks on, on how, how that all works out. But that's not why I'm here. The main thing is, is that the de-dollarization, um, less cash uh, is something that we're gonna have to deal with in the future. But does that mean it's a bad thing for us? I don't think so. I think what we're seeing is, is just that there's gonna be an adjustment to the electronic age that, that um, uh, A, if it's good or bad, we're just gonna have to deal with it. But. I like where we are because they're they're going to move forward. They're going to recreate this country into something that's um, that they've been uh, pushing for for decades now. And there we see that that positive side uh, for the citizens. That's what I see is the positive side. Is that um, regardless if they have less cash or not, they're going to an economy that's going to be able to be vibrant. It's going to have. Um, transparency, it's going to have less corruption. So let's hope that that offsetting um, circumstances makes a big difference for us. But I want to thank again for all of you guys that come and support me. It's really kind of cool because this whole thing has been a, a growth. Um, to have the, the support from outside entities uh, coming in and um, reaching out to me has been, a, has been a big thing. I really appreciate everybody that's been subscribing. I appreciate all those people that have been uh, donating and helping keeping this place running. It's been awesome.